we we got to try to make a little bit more sense of this, but to really put in perspective some of the stuff going on in the league, I looked at some of the trends in terms of efficiency and fouling for the last couple months. Um, are you privy to this? Has anyone talked about this? No, I had, this doesn't sound familiar. No. Okay, well, sit down, buckle up, put your seatbelt on, um, hold on to something tight. We are in the middle. This is unofficial because I don't know how to get monthly breakdowns from the old days, but also it's incredibly unlikely that in the old days we had efficiencies at this level. We are in the middle right now, Cody, of the most efficient offensive month in the history of the NBA. Weirdly, that doesn't surprise me because I've I've been checking league average offensive rating like periodically throughout. And it's it's kind of been hovering like, I don't know, maybe around 109, 110 at some points during the season. All of a sudden, last time I checked and it was above 111. And I'm like, when did this happen? When did this happen? Yeah. OK, so I've talked about this before, I think on an old podcast and even in a video, I've kind of graphed the trends of the last six, seven, eight years. And essentially what happened is as the pace and space and three-point booming and in conjunction with the way they called the game as this developed you had this huge run from like 2017 18 to the shutdown when coronavirus hit and you would see months like offensive rating 107 108 19 oh we hit 110 111 112 and i think in 2013 february sorry 2013 february of 2020 right before the shutdown we had an offensive efficiency in that month of nearly 113. It was 112.6. That portended what came last season. Last February, they hit 113.8, which I believe, unofficially again, was the highest efficiency month in the history of the league. Let me give it to you by this this season so we can put in perspective. I, I just can't figure out what's going on right now. Okay. In November, it was 109.6. In December, it jumped to 112.3. That's when also COVID and Omicron started to sweep through the league. January, it stayed 112.5, just about the same. We had another uptick in February to 113.8. That again would be the most efficient month in NBA history. But February has to, you know, step aside because here comes March. Cody. The offensive efficiency in March right now, yeah, Cody is covering his face because, you know, 115.4 is the league-wide offensive rating right now. Stop. No. What? 115? <laughs> yeah, we're over 115. Now, what concerns me a little bit, and we've talked about this, I think, throughout the season, is the points of emphasis with the officials – some of them seem to be there sometimes. Some of them have completely gone away. Some players, I won't mention his name in Philadelphia, have their own rules half the time. Sometimes he's officiated normally and it looks insane. Here's what's happened to the foul calls. 8.7 shooting fouls per 100. That's your starting point to remember from November. Remember, November we were under 110 offensive rating. 8.7 shooting fouls. We went 9.6 shooting fouls in December. By February, we were over 10. This month, we're at 10.6 shooting fouls. We've, we, well, we've gone from 8.7 to 10.6 shooting fouls in four months. I, I, I don't know what the playoffs are going to look. Which version of basketball is going to be played in the playoffs? And what I find interesting about this is you, I, you did retweet something that the refs just tweeted out. Like, they literally <laughs> tweeted out a points of emphasis video where they're like, this is not a foul, this is an offensive foul, and it's like... Really odd timing if this is the the context of that tweet. I, I tweeted that because it was nice to see at least some acknowledgement that in theory they're going to try to continue or re-emphasize the points of emphasis. Again, for those keeping score, these aren't rules. The rules have been there forever. The rules have been mutated, bent, twisted, morphed, grotesque sort of ways. Um, these are just the points of emphasis to help people get back on the rules the way they're supposed to be called. And now we're re-emphasizing the points of emphasis. And I will say I've seen some games, the Celtics-Mavs game yesterday, which was a beautiful, I mean, maybe we should talk about that basketball game a little bit, trying to sort out the teams and what to make of the league. That was like a more uh, a physical, old school kind of game. They seem to let a little bit more contact go consistently throughout the entire course of the game. 
and combined with these really good defensive teams, you had what I mean, what was the final score? Like nine ninety ninety five ninety two or something like that. They didn't get to the hundreds. Let's put it that way. Then you'll watch a game. There'll be, you know, 71 fouls in the first quarter. It's 45 to 39. I don't know what to make of how this impacts the playoff matchups, which are already confusing, which are already really interesting based on who plays whom. Cody, Cody, please help me out. Do you think from what you've seen, do you think that there are different players that are essentially playing by different rules or being officiated significantly differently than other players? I mean, are you asking about the the big the big time grifters out there? Maybe. I mean, you said the the guy in Philadelphia, and I wanted to jump in and say guy singular. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Embiid also is a, a bit of a merchant when it comes to trying to draw fouls, and um, I should point out that there's a, a breakdown of the Philadelphia Brooklyn game for Patreon Deluxe subscribers, patreon.com slash thinking basketball. And there's a play in there, Cody knows what I'm thinking of, where Embiid tries the rip through twice on Nick Claxton, basically into space. Like the first time he really goes after Nick Claxton's arm and Claxton gets his arm back. And, and thankfully, I, I, I felt so warm and fuzzy. They didn't call a foul. And then Embiid goes back to it, but on Claxton's body. Claxton's just standing there. Embiid tries to rip through and ends up throwing the ball off his chest for a turnover. I mean, it's it's like cartoonish basketball. I'm I'm literally trying to contain laughter. Like <laughs> when you started explaining it to me, like the, literally, like you know the like exercise when people have the medicine ball and they like twist and throw it against the wall. That's essentially the like it wasn't even a rip through. That was the move that Embiid was trying to use. Like he had the ball, tried to rip through once, and then he's like, "Up, oh, there's no arm. Let me just slam it into his chest and throw it up." And it, it's literally it's honestly embarrassing. It is embarrassing to remember that one of the best players in the league tried this the other day. Thanks for listening. You can find the full episode of this Thinking Basketball podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you enjoy podcasts.